some of the clouds in the Bible, some of the clouds mentioned in the Bible are the so-called UFOs slash spaceships that the so-called white man talks about. So Shalom, call on like how by Shem Yahweh Shai Waha or Chachodash double honors to the whole feet like elder apostles and elder bishops at the Great Millstone Church. Shalom to the rest of the Akim out here under the same doctrine in the order according to the scriptures doing what they need to do you know across the four corners of the globe you know nonetheless regardless and to the rest of the believers in on this faith so Shalom but. This is what this lesson is going to be going into. Just something I want to share real quick. Uh, there's been countless lessons done on it. You know, I've done lessons on it as far as the the UFOs talked about, you know, our IFOs and, you know, those are the, you know, vehicles of the most high and whatnot. But specifically, I want to show that to those that don't know, but in a way, to where it's even clearer now right in the bible is making this clear that what some of the clouds mentioned in the bible are the so-called ufos or spaceships that the so-called white man has revealed or talks about all right now you see on the screen you know, these mentions of the UFOs, the so-called UFOs, you know, and it's not little green men flying on them, you know, that's coming to invade the earth, you know, that's highly intelligent with, with green little bodies and big head, big, big green heads, not only the angels that's actually on them, or so-called black men, you know, and are the relatives of us Hebrew Israelites, you know, the brethren. The kinsmen of us Hebrew Israelites, you so called us so called blacks, you so called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. So, yeah, you know, um, keep this concise. You see the imaging, the images. As I said, some of the clouds, the Bible, some of the clouds mentioned in the Bible are talking about these UFOs, these so-called UFOs, you know, spaceships that the so-called white man talks about and has revealed. Not these ones, these in particular, which is um, the ones you be dealing with rain and stuff like that, which you think are normal. Think, think of when it when you usually hear the word cloud or read the word cloud in the bible for those that don't know but psalm 77 and 17 for instance it says the clouds poured out water so we know these are talking about actual you know uh, these will be instances where it's talking about actual clouds right like clouds in the sky the sky sent out a sound thine arrows also went abroad brought and then the voice of thy thunder was in the heaven the lightnings lightened the world the earth trembled and shook and this is another so that's you know talking about actual clouds and this is another instance right here this is uh job 36 and verse 27 it says for he make it small the drops of water they pour down rain according to the vapor thereof which the clouds do drop and distill upon man abundantly. So these are mentioned, these are the, the, the mentions you will come across. Okay, that's talking about a cloud, but every mention of clouds in the Bible aren't talking about just the clouds in the sky that drop, pour down rain or whatever, but they're actually mentioning what you're going to see 
that UFOs, the spaceships that the so-called white man is uh, talking about, you know? So we're gonna show these mentions because I'm sure you're like, okay, yeah, we're at, this is Exodus 19, and we're gonna start at verse nine. It says, and the Lord said unto Moses, lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. Let's read it again, Exodus 19 and nine. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Moses, lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. So the Lord is in the cloud. So these, this is a mention right here where it's not actually talking about the clouds that pour out water, the usual cloud crowds, you know, um, that you sing about when you was, you know, young, a little, when a little one sing about rain, rain going away, come again another day, you know, um, you know, that dang song, however that song go, but not those, the, this isn't this is this isn't talking about those clouds. Now, when you go into the the history of this mention right here, the scriptures always laid out how the Lord he um he led us in a cloud by day. When does a cloud lead you? And then he already said he's in the cloud. You know that history through the wilderness. You know. When we was on our way to the to our homeland, you know, our home, Israel. And um I wanna ask you to get the, the mention. Let's get it. This is Psalm 78 and verse 12. It says, In the daytime also he led them. Let's start at 12. It says, More marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand as in heap. So this is talking about that time, right? And it goes on to tell you about during the time we was in the wilderness, the 40-year walk. It says, in the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. And we already read in Exodus 19, and now the Lord saying in verse nine, and the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. Now <clears throat> this is showing you these this is this is alluding to something else, you know, because when you look up both of these words in the Hebrew, they're two different words. And that's really what I want to um bring out. So so I'll just have you know that those, are these these mentions right here are actually they 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 spaceships, man. You know, they are these UFOs that the so-called white man speaks about. UFOs, the identified flying object, as identified flying as unidentified flying object object. You know. It's the same thing that you're reading about in the scriptures. It's this flying object. The Lord said he's in, he's leading us right in the sky. But it says moreover, more recently renamed by the U by US officials as UAP is any perceived aerial phenomena that cannot be immediately identified or explained. On investigation, most UFOs so-called are identified as known objects or atmospheres atmospheric phenomena while a small number remain unexplained so that's the same thing we're reading like I said I will have you know in those, in those mentions such as um, Psalm 78 and Exodus 19 those are actually talking about what those UFOs and we know it because when it says clouds that is and we know it because both of the Hebrew words are different Versus the instances that you can see in context are clearly talking about the clouds you usually think of that whole rain versus those other ones that are clearly showing you the Lord saying he's in them, in them like a cloud, like a, a vehicle, right? Um, and they're leading us, right? 
when have you known for a cloud to do that? But anyway, so to prove that when you get this word, we in Psalm 7, 77 and 17, as we uh, started off in, you're going to see, as you're going to see, you see right here, Psalm 77, 77 and 17, to get that word clouds, the word right here is Ibe. See, and that's what it says. So this one is Ibe, and it just say a dark cloud, thicket, etc. right? So that was um, Psalm 77 and 17. Now we get Exodus 19 and 9, you see it says right here, you know, the verse we read already. When you get that word cloud in this instance, the Hebrew word for this word cloud is different. It's Ainun. See that? Ainun. Now, this was heavy. So we read on. You jump down to the Strong's definition. And this is my point. It, this word right here is nimbus. Now you get this word nimbus. Now I'm going to come back to the actual definition. <clears throat> because it used to come straight up when you used to put the word nimbus in. But for those of you that have never heard of this, of a show called Futurama. Or those of, and those of you that have. And that show, it was a big ship they used to fly on. And if this don't prove it to you, you know, I don't know what will, except the day of the Lord, you know, which is going to declare everything. But on that show, the ship that they was flying on, what you can see is this scene in this image. That ship was called Nimbus. They drop a lot of subliminal messaging and uh, those adult cartoons, you know, because it's all Hollywood. Who's, you know, which is ran by the so called white man, Esau, Amalek, the Jewish people, you know. But, uh, <clears throat> quick before we get any more imaging uh, the word Nimbus it says Nimbus Futurama it says it's the intergalactic flagship and then when you jump down this is on futurama.fandom.com it says the Nimbus is a large capital ship so why would they name, why would they have a spaceship on the, on the show Futurama, which dealt with a lot of subliminal messaging, you know, and shows such as American Dad, like The Simpsons is like another one of those, Family Guy, uh, South Park, things like that. But I'll say more so in, the, in lines with The Simpsons. I think the same guy that made The Simpsons made, I think his name was Matt Groening, he made uh, Futurama. If I'm not mistaken. So, you know, they know. And it'd be a lot of predictive uh, stuff predicted in The Simpsons. But anyway, on FuturamaFandom.com, it says Nimbus. The Nimbus is a large capital ship. So why would they name a ship on a show that deals with subliminal messaging? Nimbus. Because that's what Nimbus means. That's what the Nimbus dealt with. So this is the Nimbus right here. And you look, look. And people's inside of it and whatnot. And it's written all over it. You know, Nimbus. And there go the, the US flag. So a big ship over what appears to be the White House and the ship is called Nimbus. That's another good one. That pierces the heavens. <laughs> and this is on vocabulary.com. So the reason why they had a ship on the, a show that dealt with, you know, subliminal messaging named Futurama 
Nimbus is because that's what Nimbus means. Nimbus. A Nimbus. A Nimbus is a glowing light that encircles that encircles someone or something. See that? Someone or some something. So it holds people within. See that? Which is why the Lord said he was gonna come to Moses in the thick cloud. In the thick cloud. As it says, Nimbus definition on your dictionary.com, a bright cloud surround, surrounding gods. You know? See, it say goddesses right there, but it says appearing on earth. A bright cloud surrounding gods. Who are the gods? The gods are the angels. You know, who are in those clouds. AKA those ships. And for those that think <clears throat> this is a this a game or that's light or corny. Well Esau, the so called white man, he has a nimbus. And when you get this word this is on the astronautic nautics.com it says we're going to jump down into the paragraph it says eight spacecraft were built right of which seven were launched with one failure it says between 1964 and 1978 so that's these nimbuses and they, what, what, where, where are they at? They're flying above Earth, out of space. And when you get that word, spacecraft, to show you this, we're just talking about. Let's jump down. Spacecrafts. A spacecraft is a vehicle. So these nimbuses are vehicles. It says, or machine designed to fly in outer space a space it says spacecraft are used for a variety of purposes including communications earth observation meteorology navigation space coloniz colonization planetary exploration and transportation of humans and cargo so he named one of his spacecrafts nimbus and a spacecraft is what again? A vehicle that is designed to fly out of space. So there you go, Nimbus. And it's all, he got multiple ones. Nimbus one, Nimbus two. So that Nimbus, which is the meaning of that word cloud, is what? That the, the thing that the Lord said he was gonna be in. It's a spacecraft because it's a spacecraft. So yeah, Exodus 19 and 9, and the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the of the people unto Yahweh. And you get that word once again. Cloud in the Hebrew is Ainun. And you go to the Strong's definition, you get what? Nimbus. See that? Which is a spacecraft. Which has been put upon spacecrafts. See? And then when you go even further into the Jacini, Jacini, Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, it says, as covering and filling over the heaven, when you jump down, it says, a very large army is compared to a cloud. So that's talking about your house shot in the angels. You know, that's your, your, your space invasion. But yeah, these, these ships, these clouds and these mentions, once again, are talking about the spaceships, the, the, the so-called UFOs, aka spaceships that the so-called white man speaks about and has revealed. Even so much, because they're air, they're, uh, they they actually are the air those these they're, they're spacecrafts which you know they're actually spacecrafts which is why he named his one but anyway not to backtrack so all the mentions 
every mention of the word cloud in the Bible, um, some of the mentions of the word cloud or clouds in the Bible are talking about the spacecrafts or the so-called UFOs or spaceships that so-called white man speaks about. All right. Completely different word from the other word cloud, cloud which was uh, when it's talking about rain, which is I. Right. But anyway, so as you see, Psalm 78 and 14, in the daytime also he led them with a cloud and all the night with a light of fire. Now, for instance, in that last one I just read, the word, if you were to look that word up, you won't get, I ain't, I ain't, well, I, I none for that, you know. But you could tell through the context it's going into the ship. So, for instance, you got the same scenario right here. This is Psalms 104 and verse 3. Who led the beams of his chambers in the waters. Right, I'm going to actually start at 1. Bless, O Yahweh, O my soul, O Yahweh. My God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself, see that, with light as a garment. So the Lord, he, 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 he functions too. You know? He has a body too when he wants to manifest himself. It says, as with a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Lord has an abode. He has a home. You know, now we ultimately know that's going, you know, into something further. You know what I'm saying? But on a simple level, that's that. You know, that's that's the father's house. And it's like my father's house are many mansions, you know, which that those mansions is going into the planets, you know, the, uh, and whatnot. But that's where that's in the heavens. Those are where in the heavens. It says, so who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Right, it says when you actually read the verse three in NLT, it makes it clear. It says, I'll start at two. You are dressed in a robe of light, you stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens, you lay out the rafters of your home in the rain. See that you make the clouds your chariot, you ride upon the wings of the wind. So, there it is. So this is the, the Lord he got, you know, body, clothes, home, and ultimately what? A chariot. Because now when you look this word up, this goes into the instance to show you, like, the context showing you that's the Lord telling you, like, no, nah, this is different. This is not, this is cloud in regards of, you know, <clears throat> me see, you know, telling you, you know, because the Lord got these secrets, man. But anyway, it says, Psalms 104 for those that can understand, you know, because basically I'm just saying that the he did it like that to where it ain't clear because, the you know, the, the cloud, clouds in certain times is um, used as, as uh, uh, um, cold words, you know, mystery, you know, just like the clouds you see outside, side, they can cover things up, you know, so it's like a cloak in a sense. So that's how he, that's what it's, it's, it was a perfect word to use for it. the fact that those spaceships that so-called white man has seen are actually his and what the angels are coming back on, the, ar the armies of heaven, you know, to get us and make war with these devils. But anyway, the Psalms 104 and 3 in the KJV, who led the beams of his chambers in the waters, who make the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. So this is the same instance, because when you get the word clouds in this one, you don't get ein. You get I, and it's the same word for the, the, the Hebrew word. This is the same Hebrew word for cloud that it is for the Hebrew word for the for the word cloud. This is the same word um, for cloud in Hebrew that it is for that act the clouds when it's talking about rain, you know. But this is not talking about the actual clouds. How do we know that? Because the context, the cloud he make the who make it the clouds his chariot. What is a chariot? You get that word chariot. You got the word rock, 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 or rachab, and it says in the Strong's definition, a vehicle as written on. See, a vehicle. 
So he makes the clouds his vehicles. So the Lord, he got a he got clothes at home and vehicles. That's those spaceships, man. Those his. Not little green men. Those the angels and the angels and whatnot. It's Nimbus. And what does Nimbus mean? You know, it's it's something that encircles someone or something. You know, or it encompasses the uh, the gods when they're on the earth. You know. When they coming out, those the chariots, man. Those the that's so there you go. So let me go ahead and wrap this up. This is another mention for it right here. Um in Daniel seven. Daniel seven and thirteen. And it reads what? I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds. So the son, this is dealing with Yahweh Shah of man, you know, because he actually, you know, was flesh. He actually was born uh, like any other man. You know, it wasn't an immaculate conception. He was actually the seed of, of Joseph. You know, but people get that all um, misconstrued. So he had a completely fleshly body, even though he was the son of God, right? But anyway, of the most high, the son of man, so let me read it from the top. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came, right, meaning physically, carnally, right, came actually physically with the clouds of heaven. See that? And came to the ancient of days. Those are space, those are spaceships, the spacecrafts, man, the so-called UFOs, and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. So he got off the ships and went to the heavenly father this is when the lord touched down after being crucified resurrected after three and three days and uh the cloud seen received um and he came before everybody one last time before he had to go check in with the heavenly father how you know and, and as he was talking to everybody it was time for him to go and the cloud received him out of their sight and it said the same way that you seen him leave the same way he gonna come back and what did he leave on the cloud that Nimbus, the spacecraft, the spaceship, that's what they seen. <laughs> Chariots of Yasha Allah. So those spaceships, those UFOs, that, that that belongs to the Heavenly Father. That concept belongs to the Heavenly Father. And you can read about what I just quoted in Acts 1 and 7. I'm not going to get it. You know? So there you go. Um, and let's do this. So you see right here, Daniel 7 and 13. Right, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came near and came to the Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days is talking about the Most High. The Son of Man is talking about Yahweh Shah. Right? The Ancient of Days being the Most High, whose name is Yahweh. But it says, and they brought him near before him. So he got off the ships, you know, and came and went to the Lord. <laughs> those spacecraft. How do we know that? Because those clouds right here, they got the word Ainun. Which what goes into what? <laughs> Gotta get the root word. Nimbus. Right there. See? So wrapping this up, Mac Mark 13 and 25. It says in the stars. So I can start at uh, 26. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with see great power. See, coming in the clouds, the spaceships, the spacecraft with great power and glory. And they and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Meaning from the uh, across the globe, because the elect will be the Israelites who are scattered across the globe. Certain of the Israelites, right? All the Israelites are scattered across the globe, but only certain of the Israelites scattered across the globe uh, will be gathered. On what? By those what? By those spaceships. You know, gathered where? Up in this to the sky, you know? Beamed up. It says onto the spacecraft. It says from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of the heaven. See, and that word heaven means sky. So from the places we've been scattered to up, we're gonna be gathered from there by the spacecrafts up to the heavens, which is what the sky, which is where the spacecraft's at. And it's to prove that this is First Thessalonians 4 and 17. Then we which are alive, it says, then we which are alive. Um, I'm going to start at actually 16. It says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven 
what they shout, right, when he come back on the spacecraft. Same way he left is what he's coming back on, those clouds, a.k.a. the spacecrafts, and with the trump of the of Yahweh, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first, then we, right, and he, he's going to come with the voice of the archangel, meaning he's going to come with Maya Ka'ala and all the angels. Psalms uh, 68 and uh, 17 tells you this. It says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. That's the gathering of the elect, which is going to be administered by um, or going to be uh, pretty much done by the angels and administered by Yahweh Shah. <laughs> right? They're going to gather all of the elect from the places we're at. Lord willing, we are the elect and we shall be caught up to the heaven, you know, to the up uttermost part of the heaven. The sky. So then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, meaning physically up together with them in the clouds, in the clouds, meaning physically the clouds being the spacecraft, you know, to meet the Lord in the air because he's on the spacecraft. He's in the spacecraft. Right. The so-called UFOs, a.k.a. spaceships that the devil, the so-called white man talks about has revealed and so shall we ever be with the lord wherefore comfort one another with these words and we're going to be changed and made perfect finally show who we truly are and that's the chosen people man the true rulers of the earth so lord will you been edified some some of the some as i said the cl clouds um sometimes when the word cloud is mentioned in the bible it is actually talking about the space, the, the UFOs or spacecrafts or spaceships that the so-called white man talks about and has, you know, revealed and leaked out there by a national salvation. So with that, call on my Yahweh Bashmiel Shah Shalom.